Let's talk Coachella Valley. I'm Conrad Negron with Tina Marks, your host for a fun show. Informative show. We're going to entertain, explore the Coachella Valley. Give what people else? a lot of knowledge, a lot of things that you have not heard about. We're going to bring it to you here. And we're back again for another amazing segment with Dr. Malcolm Lesavoy. Welcome back. It's always Thank so you. good to see you. Today, we're going to be talking about breast augmentation and tummy tucks. Okay. And as we get older, um, I, well, I... <laughs> always been this way um but uh, let's talk about breast augmentation first okay um i actually was di diagnosed with breast cancer uh over four years ago i'm, I'm cancer free four years now great and congratulations when, thank you they yeah. had a very difficult time um finding the they the, the, i did a mammogram it came back inconclusive they finally found it with an ultrasound okay yep. and i understand that when you have um Implants. Implants. It's is it more difficult to to de detect or is I mean I'm I have very dense breasts so that's one of the reasons I had right. they had a problem diagnosing and, and detecting it for me. So the answer is no. Uh, to answer your question, is it more difficult to detect breast cancer if a person has breast implants? Uh, the reason being that depending on where the implant is. Either, uh, maybe we can start at the beginning, and, and essentially what a breast augmentation is, is to take a silicone bag, like a balloon, mm -hmm. uh, or a saline bag, a balloon, and insert it behind the breast so that the breast has more projection. Um, some surgeons put the uh, balloon or the implant behind the muscle, which is behind the breast, which also, um, produces more projection of the breast, and some, which I prefer to put, put it in front of the muscle, in between the breast and, and is that, the muscle. Is that a more natural look? Is that the one that's In more my opinion, it is. It is, so that's, it in, is. that's in between the muscle and the breast. That's correct, it's just As right behind, behind the, the muscle, okay. Exactly. So the ones behind the muscle, is that the ones that really? Well, I, to my kind of opinion, they, yeah, they don't look quite natural. Right. But to answer your question about mammograms and breast cancer, which is very important. Yes. That is that, does the implant um, Im implying if one has an implant, does that uh, impede the detection of breast cancer? And the answer is no. Because with a mammogram or an ultrasound uh, or even an MRI now, uh, there are many radiologists doing MRIs of the breast, which is even more precise. Uh, essentially, the implant can be moved away oh, uh, interesting. very easily. Uh, just kind of pushed aside? It pushed okay. aside, and then and it's called the Eglin maneuver, which all radiologists know about. But basically what the breast augmentation is, is essentially if I'm putting my hand behind my shirt and I'm just pushing the shirt forward, now it's not that much. Right. But basically it doesn't change the shape of the pocket, the, the color of the shirt, or a anything of that sort. It just augments the profile of the breast. The key is that it has to look natural. Right, exactly. And there's all different shapes. There's ones that are, are more teardrop, correct? And yes. so you have all different kind of choices. And do you think that most people go too large for their body type? Or do you think that- Yes, in, th in my opinion, that is the, uh, the, case. the case. Essentially, the, the, the surgery itself can be done through three different approaches, through uh, an incision in the crease of the breast, okay. an incision around the areola, the pigmented part around the nipple, or in the armpit. I do it through the armpit. Oh, you do, okay. And so that essentially there's no scar. There's no it's, scar. It's right in that area where women shave. Mm -hmm. And I tell uh, patients because the usual question that they always ask is, well, how big am I gonna be? If I'm an A cup now, will I be a D? No, you will not be a D because you can't put a size five foot into a size four shoe. You know, it just doesn't compute. And so I tell patients that it's really up to me. What you're paying for is my judgment. Yes. At the time of surgery, we have all different sizes, but different sizes in and out, in and out, until I find the largest size that looks natural. And the key is I tell patients that if you're walking down the beach in Malibu and you have a very nice uh, bikini on and somebody says, oh, she's, she's had her breast done, that defeats the purpose. Yes. In my opinion. Yes, I agree. As my, with any plastic surgery, you just want, you, you want to look that's exactly right. Uh, rested, yes. that, the whole yeah. key is... There are rested. some women that say, look, I want to have huge breasts because for me, that's what I want. And 
But I that's just, gonna cause like back problems and all, all kinds of problems, correct? Well, I, I think so, and, and I just don't want to be associated with somebody that right. says, that's, oh, that's oh, oh Dr. Work. Lesavoy did those? Oh, that's terrible. So, so you will turn people down? Many times. And you know what, I really respect Many that, times. because I think yeah. there's some doctors that'll just do whatever they ask as long as they write that check. Well, exactly. Okay, no, exactly. so is it, a, is it a fairly safe procedure? It's, it's, in my opinion, it's very safe. It's very safe. Um, uh, next year, it'll be 40 years that I've been doing breast augmentation. I've written the definitive chapter in the Bible of plastic surgery, this eight volume uh, thing about plastic surgery. Uh, they asked me to write it about breast augmentation. It works out very well. It takes less than an hour as an outpatient. You okay. do need to have general anesthesia. Yes. Uh, and you're recovered, you, you can uh, drive in two days, mm -hmm. uh, start uh, lower body workouts in a week or two weeks, and upper body in three or four weeks. And one <clears> last <throat> question about breast augmentation. Do they have to be replaced? Um, yes and no. The FDA now says that uh, after 10 years, uh, it's appropriate to have the implants replaced. However, uh, I feel that it's Really, that the the implant companies want to sell more implants. It's just I tell like every, my just patients, like everything else. Exactly. If it's yeah. yeah, I tell my patients, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, okay. You have your mammograms on an annual or every two years basis. If the implant isn't broken, which it could happen, but it stays right within this the confines of that area, it doesn't harm the breast. There's no illness to to your body or anything of that sort then there's no reason to replace them. I've seen patients who've had implants for 30 years, 35, 40 years. And there's no problem, there's, especially there's if, if problem it's done correctly. Well, if it's done correctly, but like anything, I mean, you buy a tire for your car, it can go flat, Yes. and that is possible. Right. And we do see that with saline implants. We don't see it that much with silicone implants. The key is that the implant is behind the breast, pushes the breast forward, doesn't cause disease or, or problems mm -hmm. in, in, in any way. Okay. It doesn't cause or impede the detection of breast cancer. If, if you're going to have babies and you want to breastfeed, it has, there's no problem with See, that See, that's either. a fallacy. I heard that it did interfere does with not. that. It does, it does not. not. It's my hand behind my, I don't, I'm not it's changing not the any, pocket. It's right, exactly. exactly. Okay, so that, yeah. I'm glad that we cleared that up. Yeah. Let's move into tummy tucks, which a lot of women, okay. especially that have to have a lot of help. I was blessed because I didn't put on that much weight and I only had one child. But I, once you've had that second and third, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about uh, tummy okay. tucks. Tummy tucks uh, uh, or abdominoplasty essentially is when we have sagging skin of the abdomen, either from pregnancy, which is a, a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. um, or uh, a lot of weight loss or weight gain for that matter. Mm -hmm. This is not a weight reduction procedure at all. It's a contouring procedure. Okay. But with, with childbirth, frequently we have these muscles called the rectus abdominis muscles, two strips of muscles that come down here where you have your six pack. Like I can show you my six pack, but we're on TV, so you <laughs> maybe not want to see. I saw it when you were dressing. Okay. <laughs> but the point is, is that those muscles start to separate and so in, in when we're doing an abdominoplasty, we like to tighten up so that the muscles are tight. And then essentially this extra skin that uh, patients have, we essentially lift up almost all the way to the rib cage and then bring all the way down and remove the extra skin. Okay. The one negative thing is that you have a scar from uh, hip to hip all the way along. And all it's the way? All the way along, exactly. And it's just above the pubic area or sometimes just below the pubic hair area. Okay. And a little uh, scar around the belly button because as we lift the skin, we have to leave the belly button on the abdomen. So there's a hole there where we've lifted this up. And then as we bring everything down, we cut off the extra skin and we make another hole for where the belly button comes through. We don't make a new belly button. It's your same belly button. Right. Just coming into a different position. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way like, is it, can you, can you work out and, and gain that back uh, if you have extra skin okay. or, well, or that, is it, is it good surgically question. required? Once that extra skin is removed, you can never get it back because it's in a bucket. It's no, never, it's no, never no, 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 I'm come. saying if somebody's trying to debate whether to have it, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, the point is, is that can you go and have babies? You know, can you, after an abdominoplasty, oh, can you have babies? You wouldn't because be able to have babies then. Well, you could, you, you could, I, I, you can. Okay. As a matter of fact, you okay. can. I, as a matter of fact, I did my own daughter. I did a tummy tuck on her and then she had a baby um, she, about sure two years later. I'm sure she appreciates you telling yeah. her. <laughs> well, 
die. Everybody knows now. That's so true. <laughs> but the point is, is that it, it, you can. Okay. I mean, it, it's maybe not as easy because you are snugger. Okay. Uh, but you can work out. You, okay. If you're going to gain weight, you're going to gain weight. It's not like it's a magic potion. Right. But it's just a contouring at that time. Exactly. Now, you do <clears> not perform these surgeries down here in the desert, but you do perform them in your Encino office and your Beverly, Beverly Hills office. And That's we're going to put all that information up on the screen. That's correct. You are here on Fridays to do facelifts and fillers, but primarily yeah. facelifts. That's and you know, our right. next yeah. segment, we're going to be talking all about facelifts. Yeah, but there are excellent plastic surgeons here in the valley. Uh, in Not Palm like you. Springs, in Not Palm like Springs, you. who do do breast augmentation and abdominal plastics, mm -hmm. uh, excellent ones. Oh, we Just know make that. sure, make sure that they're board certified. That's okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay.